Hello, friends, and welcome again to Figure Study, where we appreciate the form in Transformers. And if you'll notice, we're actually doing something that's, like, recent. Possibly more than recent. I know it's weird, right? I'm just kind of breaking from tradition, and uh, we're going we're gonna to take a look at Nitro from The Last Night, or Nitro Zeus, I guess. I don't know. So... I know it's a little weird for me to be starting in robot mode. The reason I'm starting in robot mode is because his transformation is kind of involved and fiddly, and the directions don't do a really good job of that. So I figured since there aren't a bunch of videos of him up as of this recording, I would go through transformation into jet mode because it's such a pain in the butt. So we're going to do that talk about the jet mode then it'll basically like be a figure study as per usual so let's just jump right into it so first thing we're gonna do is take these things off and i actually hate these things but uh we'll get more into that later okay so transforming his arm here you want to push these bits in and these will stop here what you need to do is you actually need to push you can see this little pointed bit there. You need to push that a little bit in, and that'll allow you to push it the rest of the way into the arm there. Then, accordion this out. It's on a double hinge. Swing that around, and get that lined up. And do the same on this side, and then they just peg together there. Okay, this arm, Flip in the fist, push the Gatling gun in, and that's that arm. And then can rotate the legs, point the feet. Okay. And now for the head bit, I want to kind of pull, ah, I'm going to pull this panel up so that'll flip up reattach the head if it's popped off and that just uh, has that little square peg there it goes right in there it's like a Titan's Return style thing with good reason <laughs> as I'm sure most people are aware at this point he actually does he's compatible with Titan's Return figures which is weird okay so there's actually a panel here that flips up and it's weird. It's like you can't really flip it up without the proper leverage. And the way I found to do that is you kind of push, just gently push this head in, keep a finger right along here, and you just kind of you just kind of leverage it up if the head's in properly. Why is this being so difficult? There we go. Okay, so with that in, just kind of leverage it up. And it will swing up. There you can see that little hinge there. That is a remarkably difficult hinge to move without using that head for leverage, honestly. It's kind of amazing. Okay, now this is where the real complicated stuff comes in. You gotta split the legs open. And this one specifically, on the same side as the nose cone, has a separate hinge that allows it to move down. Once that's moved down, you can actually take this arm and this will pull out on its own hinge system and become the nose. Now, for proper orientation, what you want to do is you want to kind of use your finger to pull this in so that will make sure that the nose cone is properly oriented so that it can peg in right here. And then just push that in. There we go. And now this arm hinges in. And that hinges in. You want to make sure that this is, that you're holding this little shoulder pauldron out because that needs to go over this bit here. So do that. And then all you got to do then is straighten this back piece out so that it lines up. Okay, now I'm going to fold these 
turbines out of the way so that we can fold the tail section back. And probably want to flip these out of the way. Okay, and then there is a pin and a port or whatever you want to call it that will just whoop, they'll just peg together. And that takes care of that. All right, we're getting there. Now we hinge this back up. When you hinge this up, you want to make sure this goes underneath this uh, shoulder plate that we just moved up. So that goes there, and that just kind of pushes in, and the whole leg swings back around. And now this clips into a few different places. There's actually a, uh, on the underside here, there's a port right there that will peg there. And on top of that, there's actually a clip here that clips into this part of the leg. So once that's straightened out, just kind of wiggle it in there. And there we go. And then just line that up and plug it into the tail section. Okay. Do the same thing on this side, just kind of finagling it so that this can... Yeah, come on. There we go. And then peg it in there. There we go. Okay, now we've got a pretty solid looking jet burrito thing. Now the wings. Okay, I'm gonna put this down, swing the camera down so we can do this without me having to hold the figure up. The wings are a pain to do without these bits popping off because they're on a hinge here, but the hinge doesn't actually swing back. Like this is where it stops. So you're actually putting a fair bit of tension on this. When, like it'll pop off and it's fine. Like it's not gonna break, but it's annoying. So actually, okay. I'm gonna do this and then show you kind of what I'm doing on the other one. So I'm gonna pull up gently and kind of keep the, uh, a bit attached with your thumb there. Pull that out, and once it's free of its uh, attachment point, you can swing. There we go. You can straighten that out. And straighten that out again, and then this bit will plug in right there. And then this extra bit will fold out. That goes down. And then the whole wing assembly folds down and attaches in two different points. There's this plug here will actually go into the leg here. Get that out of the way so you can see. Go in there. And then this will go into the what is technically the hip section there. So when you fold it down, I find the best thing to do is just kind of fold it down a little bit and then once everything's sort of lined up, you just push that peg in, and then you can get that in there, and just squeeze everything down, and there you go. And now, to show you kind of what I was doing with the wing on this side, the reason you want to pull this, get these out of the way too, the reason you want to pull this back a little bit is because there's actually a little bit of a lip right there that this goes over. So you want to do that. And it's 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 annoying, but it's it works. Like it's it's functional. And it's all like the same deal here with the with the wing on this side. So fold that down. Get everything kind of lined up. Push that in. There we go. And then flip up the tail. And just for posterity, we'll flip down the landing gear. And then we have these bits that just plug in on the undersides of the wings there. Yeah. I really don't like these missiles. They are so... just They're stumpy and annoying. Come on. Come on. All right, now that that's over, we can get to talking about Nitro's jet mode without 
any of that transformation preamble, but yeah, that's a bit more robot origami than I thought there would be with this guy. Anyway, I actually really, really like this jet mode. I mean, he does have some robot junk on the bottom, but it's surprisingly kind of well distributed. Like the plane doesn't, or the jet doesn't necessarily seem that much thicker than it would be otherwise. And there's really not a whole, like there's some obviously, but there's not a whole lot that kind of interrupts the silhouette from the top. I mean, yeah, it still looks like a folded up robot underneath, but it's not quite like, say, Silverbolt, where you've got like a plane with a robot just kind of folded up underneath it. This, at least like the mass of the robot, contributes to the mass of the plane. And I really like the shape here. It's just, it's, despite this little bit, it's just a very clean looking jet to me. The color, I like the color scheme. I'm not, I actually do like how you've got the, uh, like I like the gray and the black, but I like how you've got just like a little black strip back here, a little black strip for the kind of the backs of the wings, the Decepticon logos. Little stripes of red are a little out of place, but honestly, they don't seem... I mean, color scheme-wise, they're out of place, but they don't actually look out of place, if you know what I mean. And I actually... I don't know if this is an official color scheme for this jet, because I don't know what kind of jet this is. I'm not bothering to look it up, because I don't care. But I don't know if this black uh, cockpit section is actually, like part of the plane's color scheme, but I actually kind of like it. Like at first it seemed a little weird to me how it's just this black nose cone section and the rest of the jet is like this grayish color, but it's really grown on me. I actually really do like it. And I mean, I don't know, it's just, there's just something very clean about this jet mode to me, even though yes, you've got again, all that robot junk on the underneath, on the underside. I think it's just the way that it all kind of folds around and I, as annoying as these wings are to deal with, I do appreciate how well they kind of fold up and into each other to make those big turbines on his back. And of course, there's actually a fair bit of molded detail throughout this guy. I've actually already been thinking maybe I want to do some panel lining on him to bring some of this detail in the uh, gray pits out. Haven't quite decided if I want to do that yet or not, because I just got my hands on this guy. But, uh, it's neat. And then, of course, you've got the missiles on the underside, and I really hate these missiles, because they're short, ineffectual, the white stands out a little too much. Like, it's this super bright white against all of this gray and, like, black. Not, like, dark, like, not, like, super dark black, but, you know. It just... It sticks out in a weird way to me. Plus, the pegs on these things are very tight. So getting them on and off is a pain. And sometimes I've like, you know, popped in turbine mode. I've like popped these things off their hinge because I've been trying to pull these things out. And I just, I hate them. I wish they weren't there. I think they look silly in robot mode, but we'll get to that later. But yeah, I just, I'm probably once this review is done, I'm going to, take these off and put them in a box and just not think about them for a while. Anyway, I do think the jet mode looks really good. And I should probably do a size comparison here. So for our vehicle mode size comparison, I'm going to bring in our Titan's Return Deluxe and of course Miss Iran as our gold standard there. So you can see it's a big jet. <clears throat> <It's>, uh... <laughs> All right, get her there. Will you stand up? Yes, you will. Good. And I guess we'll put you there. Will you stand up is the thing. Oh, wow, you will stand up. Okay, cool. So yeah, he's... Nitro is a pretty large jet. This is... Uh, no, it's all falling apart. Come on, get in there. Yeah, um, so the reason I'm also using Trigger Happy, not just because 
Trigger Happy is, of course, another flying vehicle. It is because he is a Decepticon Headmaster. And the reason that is significant is because Nitro actually has a little cockpit. If I can get this open. Okay. So, you can open the cockpit, and you can actually put a Titan Master inside. And you can have a Titan Master piloting Nitro. That is kind of weird, kind of silly, kind of dumb when you think about it. But at the same time, I actually do think it's pretty cool. I don't know. It's just it's an extra thing you can do. It's neat. Let's see if we can get him out. There we go. Aha. Right, so that is pretty much it for the jet mode. Again, I do think this is a really nice, clean-looking jet mode from most angles. And I mean, even from the side, it doesn't look bad. It's just the underside where it's like obviously folded up robot. So yeah, I'm honestly impressed with this jet mode. I was not thinking that I would be all that into it, but way more into it than I thought. Anyway, let's go back to robot mode so we can talk about that. Right, that actually went a little bit better on camera than I thought it was going to go. Um, now, I do have these things that I need to attach. Just didn't want to do that during the sped up transformation. Just to go over the fact that, again, I hate these things. So, they just plug in right back here. But again, they're like really tight. And honestly, I don't think they look good at all. There we go. And, yeah, it's like, I just, ugh, ugh, I say. Anywho's, it's, ah. Anyhow, there we have Nitro, a.k.a. Nitro Zeus, in his robot mode. And this is really cool. I mean... Transformation is absolutely a little bit on the finicky side. I don't mind it so much now that I've gotten used to it. It definitely took some getting used to. I actually transformed this guy back and forth way more when I first got him than most of the other Last Night figures I've gotten. Just to kind of... It's like I was disappointed with him when I first got him out of the box because that transformation was such a beast. But I really, really, really didn't want to be disappointed with him because... I am in love with this robot mode, and I'll get into that in a minute, but I basically just couldn't, like, I hated folding up the wings. I, getting everything lined up properly when, like, putting the wings, like, just opening up the wings with the little turbines constantly popping off was one thing, and then the constants, like, just trying to get the wings in the right position, and the instructions weren't very good, and so, yeah, I was just... I was disappointed and I didn't want to be because I was so happy with this robot mode and I'm glad I stuck with him because yeah it definitely requires patience but now that I'm used to the transformation 
it's fine. It's just, it's a little bit finicky and it's definitely hard to do in front of a camera. But anyway, getting back to the robot mode, I freaking love this robot mode. I love it. And let's just take a minute to bask in its sort of segmented armor plated glory and just how similar it looks to a Jaeger from Pacific Rim. I mean, I, I can't be the only person who noticed that, right? Like, this looks like it could be from Pacific Rim. Even the name Nitro Zeus, that actually fits in with the naming scheme. You got Gypsy Danger, Crimson Typhoon, Cherno Alpha, Striker Eureka, Nitro Zeus. I, I think it makes sense. Anyway, I do really like this robot mode. I like the just the smoothness of most of it. Just like the the segmented bits, I think it's quite neat how the uh, the knees. It's actually got very nice knees. Like those are some pretty nice bends. But then you've got this plate here that actually folds down when the knee bends and straightens out when the knee straightens out. And I think that's that's really nice. That is a nice little nice little visual visual effect and engineering detail. And the chest also looks really nice. I'm not entirely sure why he's got bug fingers where his abdomen and uh, six-pack might be, but whatever. And I actually like this tiny bit of asymmetry in the chest plate, how you've got not just like the Decepticon logo, but the actual shape. You've got just like this one line going down here, but then here you've got these two circles. Or even like this hinge from the transformation kind of adds a little bit of asymmetry to it as well, which I know is more the engineering than the actual design, but still, it's nice. And of course, you've got the asymmetrical arms, which they're asymmetrical, but at the same time, they're not like absurdly out of the ballpark from each other. Like if you notice, the fists are pretty much at the same level. So the arms themselves are the same length. It's just you've got this big old gun barrel on one side and this big old shield crossbow thing on the other, and those are actually both close to the same length too. And for the shoulders, they're the same, but then you got the 13 here, which again makes me think of a Jaeger from Pacific Rim, just that kind of detailing. And then for the arms... Lots, again, lots of molded detail, and I really, really do appreciate that. It's a definitely gappy on this arm. I don't mind it that much, because since it's really, really black, you don't really... Like, it's it's there. The gap is there, but it's not as noticeable because it's so dark. So, I'm fine with that. And this arm... My... I'm... I like and dislike this arm because on the one hand, when you're going to bend, like this arm gets a decent, decent range at the elbow. This one, not so much like it bends to here and then it just kind of stops. You can push it past that point and it'll go that far, which is not bad, but you're kind of flexing plastic to do that. So it's one of those, you know, you may want to be careful when doing that. Um, also, you can't do anything with the fist, it's just there, but that's okay, and honestly, I'm just super excited they did something like this without giving him the freaking gorilla arms, because, ugh, they love to do that, don't they? So yeah, and plus, I mean, he's got a Gatling gun on one arm and this thing on the other, I mean, what, what does he even need to hold weapons for? <laughs> and I do like how that plane the plain cockpit, cockpit section folds up to make this shield crossbow thing. That's just really neat. Even though there doesn't actually seem to be anything that would be shooting from here, it's still really neat looking. I am definitely, definitely into that. And then, of course, we've got his head, which it's a little high up, in my opinion. I feel like the neck might be a little too long, but... I do like that head. Very kind of shockwave reminiscent. I almost feel like the horns are unnecessary because like they're, he's got a pretty ornate bit of headdress going on back there, but you can barely see it because it's so dark. 
And especially considering like this collar section is also the same, you know, it's like super black and <laughs> it's just hard to see some of these finer details. Which, by the way, he has Gatling guns over his shoulders. So yeah, he is armed to the freaking teeth if he had teeth. I don't think he has teeth. But yeah, I, I like the mono eye, even though, even based on the box art, which you can you know, see right there because I'm going to add it in post. Even with the box art, you can see like that that's not accurate. I, I mean, I think it looks cool, but it's not accurate. <laughs> and then, of course, he has his turbines. And I think the turbines look cool. I hate the little white missile things. They just look like teeth sticking up and it's just pointless. Like he's, I don't know, it's, it's like he's got some weird little Burger King crown on his head for some, or on his back for some reason. That's just how I see him. But I think the turbines themselves look cool. They fold up nicely. You know, he's got a bit of a backpack, but I don't mind it. And you can kind of fold these however you want. I just prefer to do it that way to kind of clean up his silhouette from the front. But uh, yeah, I don't mind them. The thing that bugs me about these turbines is in the directions, it wants you to like tilt them forward. But mine are just, they, they don't, they don't stay up. Like that one kind of does, this one does not. Okay, it does that high, but if I knock it down just a little bit, you can see, yeah. And that one, just, yeah. So, and even then, I mean, if you angle them up slightly, it's, you know, it helps to see those turbines a bit, but I honestly don't care. And I think that looks just kind of silly. So it is what it is, whatever. I mean, you can kind of offset it by lifting the tail up and these will balance on the tail. So that gives you a bit of an angle and that looks good. Only problem is that means he takes up even more space on the shelf. So whatever. Now, color wise, I do like the black and gray color scheme that we've got going on here with the hints of copper or bronze I think I guess bronze in the feet and legs and chest area there's none of that in like the rest of the torso but it's I think there's enough of that and it's made into like smaller details that it's fine doesn't really bother me and it's funny too like this guy the paint on him is fairly simple all things considered but because of this lighter plastic, it does help some of those details to stand, some of those molded details to stand out. One thing that I do think is kind of weird, and it doesn't so much bother me, but it just makes me wonder why, is this arm is silver. Like this bit here, that is the, uh, the Gatling gun slash engine for the jet is silver. You don't see the silver in jet mode. And it doesn't make sense to me why that's silver in robot mode, because nothing else on him is silver. I've looked over this thing a couple of, like, well, more than a couple of times. I've looked over this thing a lot in the past day that I've had him, and there is no other silver paint on this figure. So I just don't know, I don't understand why they painted that arm silver and nothing else. I feel like it would have made more sense to paint something in the center area silver or like have a little bit of silver on the other side to balance it out a little bit more. I mean, it's not distracting. It's just strange to me. I don't understand that. But regardless, this robot mode is really cool. I do, again, I really like that segmented plated armor look. I like the fact that he looks like he could have stepped out of Pacific Rim. And here's some size comparisons real quick can see he is a fairly large fellow. I think I'm actually going to move everyone back a little bit more because we got more size comparisons to bring in Optimus. So you can see he's actually taller than Optimus. Is he? Maybe he's not. No, I guess he just looks taller than Optimus because of his backpack, but still, he's a good size. And just for fun... I'll put in Steelbane. So yeah, he is... I mean, he's Voyager size, but I don't know. It's just something about his shape makes him appear taller to me. 
actually. We're gonna leave Trigger Happy out there, because we got a thing. So, as was mentioned in the jet mode, he has his, uh, you know, the cockpit where the headmaster can stay. He is also himself, as I'm sure many are aware, a sort of headmaster. So, we'll just pop Trigger Happy's noggin off. And put his body off to the side. And here, here we have Nitro. And okay, so Nitro's head just pops right off. And it uses this square peg that is very, very reminiscent of a uh, Titan's Return peg. He's not actually a head, like his head does not transform into anything. But it does pop off, and you can actually see that shape is so reminiscent of a Titan Master. Now, when I got him out of the box, this was facing for like this bit of the peg was facing forward, and it forms a more solid connection. But then you got, you know, you got, you got that going on. So by putting it in this way. It's not as solid a connection, but you don't get that that wiggliness. So, you know, typical Titan's Return shenanigans. Anyway, take Trigger Happy's head and pop him down there. And, ugh, jeez, okay, we'll do the turnaround trick on him, too. Yep, there you go. That's a little better. And now... <laughs> Nitro has Trigger Happy's head... Because, sure. I mean, why not? It's funny. The the Titan Master heads that I've tried on him, and I'll put up some pictures so you can kind of see the, uh, the other attempts that I made to try and mess around with this guy. The Titan Master heads look a little small on his body, proportionally, even though... Like, they're not that off in size, really. I think his head's just longer. So they're not that off, but I kind of like how this looks, because while the head is a little bit smaller, it almost makes it look like the there's like a robot inside of, like, battle armor. Like, the head's just, like, it's not so tiny that it's, like, ridiculous, but it's tiny enough that it does kind of look like there could be another robot inside of this body. And that actually is pretty cool to me. <laughs> so, get his noggin back on. There we go. So, yes, the last night, I guess, Premier Edition Nitro or Nitro Zeus. I actually do really, really like this guy. I was, like I said, a little disappointed at first just because of the finickiness of the transformation. But I've come to respect it. Like, finicky though it may be... They put a lot of work into the engineering of this guy. This is actually pretty impressive. I was kind of expecting it to be more of a standard legs fold up and everything under the jet and that's it. But like so many things just kind of switch places and like shift around to accommodate entire limbs moving to like, you know, his his arm moves down to here. <laughs> it's like it's it's impressive to me. And you can also do the entire transformation without removing the head. It's really neat, and I really like the look of this guy. He looks so cool. So cool. I may end up trying to get myself a second one in the future just to do like a panel lining experiment, because it's like I kind of would do it on this guy, but I'm a little I'm a little nervous that it might not go well and or I may not like the look, and I don't want to ruin a figure that I really, really like. So for now, just going to leave him as is. But yeah, this guy is very cool. As long as you know what you're getting into with that transformation, I just think this guy's so awesome. He is he is well worth it. He is neat. The headmaster thing seems pointless, but hey, it's a thing. You know, it's not hurting anything really. And I mean, you know, worst comes to worst if I really wanted to, I could just super glue the next stump into the uh, <laughs> into the chest there, and it'd still be able to move because the joint is in the head, not 
where the neck connects to the torso. So, yeah, if I really wanted to, I could permanently attach that head. But regardless, aside from the dumb tooth missiles up on top there, he is very cool. So, yeah, very glad I got my hands on this guy. Anyway, that has been my look at the last Transformers, the last night, Premier Edition, Voyager class. Ugh, I hate going down the line like that. Nitro or Nitro Zeus. Again, very cool. Thank you, everybody, for watching. As per usual, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Any combination of those three would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art, even art that requires a little patience, is more than meets the eye. <laughs>